into the stomach right here. Um, the esophagus makes a movement, and this movement you can hear it when you have food that is stuck. Like when you eat something that is a little too dry, and you like it gets sort of stuck here, and all of a sudden you feel that like very slowly moves down, and you're like, okay, you know, it was hard. So that itself. Um, that's the um, peristalsis movement. Peristalsis is a movement that is away. So the esophagus is start moving the food down in a way, all the way down into your stomach. The movement is called? Peristalsis. Peristalsis. It's in your, uh, if you open your digestive system in page 146 in your book, on this book, 146 uh, digestive system. Mm -hmm. I want you to have it open there because I'm going to start talking about some of this stuff, okay? So I want you to um, just open it because we're going to go down the line, okay? So, 146. 146 is your medical terms. Now, the digestive system, if you can see right underneath, right by your chin, right lower and right up there, you'll see that that's your salivary glands. Mm -hmm. So you have salivary glands right there in the bottom, right there, and also on the side here. This is why sometimes when you eat something sour, really sour, it starts, you can feel it here and the saliva starts adding up because uh, the salivary glands right here, both right on this side and right underneath here, start working, uh, putting in more saliva. A lot of times when your salivary glands get stuck, um, sometimes the ducts get blocked. For some reason, they get blocked. And all of a sudden, you, you start getting like a lump here, or a lump here. And it looks like, um, you know, like it's, it's a lump lump, and it hurts. That's when the gland got blocked, and now it's having a hard time. So what they ask you, the uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, what they suggest is for you to eat something like sour gummies, or something sour, real sour. And because when you do that, the gland sort of contracts in and out, to produce more saliva, mm. and when it does that, it unblocks. So it helps to unblock it. That and warm pads and all that kind of stuff help unblock it. Um, so once the food goes down, when the food turns into that oatmeal texture, it's called a bolus, B-O-L-U-S, a bolus. And the bolus goes down into your stomach and once it gets into the stomach, now, on its way down, by the time that you're chewing, the brain already sent that message to the stomach to start producing acid. <clears throat> now, the most amazing thing of the stomach is that the stomach produces an acid that is its harmful and car acid, mm -hmm. battery acid. Mm -hmm. That's how dangerous it is to your tissues. Yet, it lives in our body stays inside the stomach and it doesn't burn the stomach through. Um, I had a victim that, of an overdose one time and when I saw this young woman, when they brought her in, uh, she the whole side of her face was like burned, like somebody had burned. You, you could, the lip was like gone. It was all like, all this was like gone. And um, so I said to the doctor, did she get burned? And he goes, no, it's an overdose. I didn't get it then, what was, why she would have it. I said, maybe an overdose, something happened, somebody hurt her. And what had happened was that, that she vomited so much from the overdose mm -hmm. that the acid in the stomach came out. Mm -hmm. And when she passed out, the acid sort of stayed there and it actually literally burned all this away. Mm -hmm. So the acid can really burn your tissues. That's why it's essential when somebody has too much acid in the stomach to take medication to bring it down 
because that's the kind of damage that is doing inside. So it's actually burning and coming up. It goes, so the stomach, so it comes up and it goes back up here and climbs back up again. Usually it happens when you're sleeping. It happens in the daytime too. But most people have a lot of acid. When they're sleeping, the acid comes back up. So sometimes a person may come in to ear, nose, and throat clinic because they keep losing their voice. And the voice is like hoarse. And when they come in, they don't understand what's going on. And the first thing that the throat doctor says to them is, do you have problems with your stomach? And like, what does that have to do with the price of bread, right? And, and the reason why is because when you start losing your voice or you start having um, acid come up in, in night when you're sleeping, um, it burns your voice box. So irritates it and burns it. So it's important that if you do have too much acidity or if certain foods produce too much acidity in your stomach, to take an anti-acid medication because it does a lot of damage. So um, a lot of times when a person comes in with a voice box, then we give them an anti-acid right away. So the throat doctor gives her an anti-acid or him an anti-acid and to bring down the digestive system. And then we look inside to look at the esophagus and the voice box to see how much damage it is. And a lot of times we see how everything is raw, red, raw. Um, the inside of us, of the esophagus, is sort of like a soft pink also. And it's very light. It's a very light pink. And so when it's, um, when it's like that, you also can see the voice box, your folds of the voice box, that you have like one that is lumpy and the other one is it's, it's swollen. And this is where you lose your voice or you sound hoarse. So, um, acid, a stomach in the acid is not a good thing to have. It needs to be controlled. Because also, we know for a fact that inflammation, chronic inflammation, can also increase your chances of stomach cancer. Is that acid got a special name? Or is it just acid? Is it acid? Go ahead. It is hydrochloric. Yeah. What's the name? Let's talk about my future doctors here. Mm -hmm. They're already in the middle of those classes. They're already, uh, or they are already. You, you, you guys are already. You've done this before, right? Have you gone to? Are you practicing already? Already in your your profession yet? No, you're just going to school. Okay. No, we like learn this, like acids and stuff in chemistry. In chemistry. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, so this acid is it's it's a polypass. If you find this kind of acid in the outside, it's dangerous. Okay? Um, so the stomach has, in the lining of the stomach, you have these little tiny holes. If you look in your atlas, in your, um, if you have your atlas out there, if you look in your atlas, it shows how um, the little tiny holes where the acid comes through, it actually squirts the acid in. So the, uh, already the brain sent the message to the stomach when you were chewing, something's coming down, you start producing this acid, and this acid is what's gonna now break down your food. Your stomach also starts moving and crunching your food down. It moves, it does peristalsis movement also, it moves. And, um, and you hear all that sound? Have you ever guys ever heard, like have you had a lot to drink and sometimes you move, you actually can feel it? Mm -hmm. Or you hear it, mm -hmm. it was very quiet, you hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's when you have a lot of acid or water in your stomach, you can actually hear it if it's very quiet outside. Um, the diagram that I gave you is different because I, it's, I, it's I separated um, some of your uh, organs. As you can see, we're all like crunched together, all cut together. So in the diagram I gave you, it separates everything a little bit mm -hmm. so you can see the organs that are attached to this and the ducts that is attaching these organs. So you can see it better. Once the food is here, now the process of digestion has started 
and now it's going to go into uh, the intestines, uh, the small intestine. I'm going to move here for a minute. So, this is the word for peristalsis. Okay, right here. Sorry, if I'm underway. Those are the wave-like movements of involuntary muscular contractions. So, well, what I just said earlier, the teeth are the most one of the most important factors because of the saliva. It, it breaks down the food and then it produces more saliva, and that's the, the start of your digestive process. It makes the food soft and it, and it makes it into a bolus. Now we also have. Uh, and we re and we studied this before when we did the respiratory system. So right about now, the food is when it goes down from your uh, mouth into the esophagus before you swallow the epiglottis. Remember that flap, the cartilage mm -hmm. that covers the trachea? Mm -hmm. Automatically, when you're chewing, that comes down. So that when you swallow, the food goes into the esophagus and not into the trachea. But if you're talking and eating at the same time, sometimes it gets confused and that's when you start choking. Huh? Yes, because it's going the wrong way. So the body, uh, your trachea is going to start trying to get rid of it and you start coughing and coughing until you bring it up. Yes. So then it's recommended when you're eating to apply it and don't talk. It's the best thing, right? <laughs> Which a lot of us don't do. <laughs> um, uh, so, it, so this is how the process starts. Once it enters the stomach, um, which has three mechanical tasks to do. First, the stomach has to store the food and the liquid. The second job is of the lower part of the stomach, uh, is to mix up the food, the liquid, and the digestive juices together. So that's where it starts moving around. Mixing is done by the muscle power, total muscle power of your stomach. The third task of the stomach is to empty its contents very slowly into the small intestine. Now, the small intestine, we have two intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. So the small intestine is the one that absorbs all your vitamins, all your calcium. Everything in you, that you eat gets absorbed by the wall of the small intestine. The small intestine is vital because if you don't have your small intestine, was too short, then one of the things that happens, you don't absorb all this stuff and it just goes through you. And then your body starts lacking all these things. So the small intestine is sort of like when you're doing laundry. You got your white clothes, you got your dark clothes, you know, you got your blacks, all black, and all your reds, you know, and then what, and that's exactly what the small intestine does. It says, okay, white's here, red's here, black's here, we're not gonna mix all this stuff up. You're gonna go this way, you're gonna go this way, you're gonna go this way. It separates through the walls and brings it into the blood. It absorbs everything from your food, from your liquid, everything. Once it absorbs everything at once, then it's gonna go into your large intestine. Everything that is no good for you, and everything that's been taken out of it goes into your large intestine. But when food is being mixed in in the stomach, one of the other things that happens is that the, the liver starts working, the gallbladder starts storing bile, and, and then so you start producing all this, um, all these other enzymes. These enzymes and these chemicals are mixed, go and mix in with all that food also. Because this is the stuff that is gonna break, like bile, that is stored in your gallbladder. Like the gallbladder is really small. And um, let me see if you can, let me go back up a little bit and let me see if you can see your gallbladder. It, this one doesn't show much of the gallbladder. 
The gallbladder is really tiny.